Hey everyone, we're live. Um, just so you know, um, I do have Dottie in the background. She is going to be um, doing some work. Just so you know, I would really love it if you guys could comment, share and subscribe to Michelle's Patchwork on YouTube, of course. So um, please feel free to share this everywhere. I would really, really like if um, people would share and that means that I have more ammunition and more reason to do more free dem uh, demos and uh, workshops for you. So I've just noticed I can't really see that on there. So Dottie's going to get me a black tech star any minute now, um, even a red one, whatever, couple of, col couple of colours, just something so we can see. So when you're on board, let me know and uh, just tell me I've got a fan going in the background. So I really would like to know if that's too loud and if the video is okay, all that sort of stuff, and you can hear me clearly. So just drop a comment in. Feel free to ask me anything you like. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get, get moving. So I can see there's a few people on board. Welcome, welcome. Glad to have you here. Um, don't forget to share. We like to share the love. So is the volume and everything okay? Give me a like, a thumbs up. Now, today I'm going to start doing a uh, quilt as you go. So I do have this drawn as a 10 inch block. Great, Sue, welcome aboard. Um, I'm going to use a black, a red texture or a brown texture, whichever is easy for you guys to see, because this is all about getting this done for you. Now, this is going to be a. This is part one of a couple of a couple of videos. Sorry, I'm going to do. Um, I want the blocks to sort of finish at around about ten, nine and a half inches or so. It doesn't really matter too much because I'm just going to add them together. So it's going to end up being four blocks by four, which will be 16 in total. Sorry, I got the itchy nose. Now, I've drawn a square on a piece of paper, and this is really important, just, just to, to create your own quilt as you go and get yourself some ideas. And it's really, really easy. It sort of works very similar to foundation piecing, but without all the paper tearing, which is brilliant. So... You get yourself your your square of um, your your wadding. So we'll start with wadding because that's what we're going to be working on, and the backing. So your backing is going to be. I'll write this here. So your backing, and I'll zoom into it for you. Your backing pieces will need to be twelve inch square. Okay, and your wadding or batting, whatever you want to call it, pieces are going to need to be 10-inch squares. Um, and I'll zoom into that a little bit. So if I can zoom in there, there we go. That's um, Hopefully it's coming through the right way. Good morning, girls. Happy days. Hi, Lynette. Um, good morning, so magic, Julie, my darling. Um, hopefully this is coming at you the right way around because to me on the video it's showing up back to front so I'm hoping you see it the right way around. Dottie's probably going to get online for me soon and have a look and just make sure it's going the right way around for you. Um, so obviously because we're going to do 16 blocks we're going to need 16 of each. Yeah okay so I hope that helps. So it's all good your end? Good thanks. That body doesn't need to do it because the girls are telling me. Hi, Kath. How are you going? Hi, Lynette and uh, Julie and Sue. Welcome, welcome. Um, it is the right way around and I'm on my quilting page. I see that so magic. So if anyone wants to, uh, Julie Donaghy, who comes and helps me and does things and want to just drop in and see her site, you're welcome to go do that at So Magic Quilts with Julie Donaghy. Um and, of course, don't forget to share and subscribe to mine because I'm going to give you lots and lots of free patterns. Now, 
When you look at patterns in a magazine, and I'm just going to go through the basics of how I create something from scratch like this. I look at the size that I want it to be, and then I look at what I need to get the basics, get, get it to that size as a finished size. So, and then I look at what kind of pattern I want. Hi, Rusty. How you going, Rado? So in a different colour texture, and I don't know if it'll show up too much, um, I'm going to, actually, I'm going to get Dottie to get me my other ruler that's a bit longer than this, mm -hmm. um, the smaller one. And what I want to do is find the centre of this. So Joanne Powell, all perfect here in Townsville, Queensland. I lived in, I lived in Ringwood, Victoria until 2011. When I moved here, this looks fun. It's going to be awesome. So even if it's a big, big one, love, it's fine. Yeah. So we're going to use and do a real scrap buster. Thanks, Betty. So knowing that this is 10 inches across, because that's what I've done it as, so I've done 10, 10, 10, and 10. Do you know how hard it is to write back to front? Just saying. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm multi-talented, multitasking. So welcome, Joanne. Now, um, this one here, I'm going to mark my halfway mark. So I'm going to go five inches there. And I'm going to mark my five inches down the bottom and across the sides as well. Uh, all the way around. Can't read it back to front. I'm fairly, fairly, fairly um, apt at many things, but reading back to front, no, not so much. So I'm just going to mark those, and that's because I want to find a halfway. I'm good. You sound a bit chirpier today. I am. I am pumped. <laughs> well done. I can't multitask anymore. <laughs> Thanks, Joanne. I'm really struggling too sometimes. So what I want to do is just go across here, and I'm just going to do a small cross for starters. I could change that just to give me the centre point. There we go. So we know where our centre is. This will also help us break this down into um, either smaller ones if we want to or, you know, whatever size. Hi from Texas. Hi, Billy. Welcome aboard. We are going to, uh, you are welcome to watch and re-watch this as many times as you like. I'm also going to um, just draw in these halfway marks cross-cutting on the diagonal. So this makes it nice and simple, but it gives us a platform to work on. And when, even though it's a cool as you go and everyone's like, oh yeah, that's pretty easy and da 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 da, but we're gonna really make this our own. And you can do any kind of pattern you like. So let's just start with this. So when you look at it and you think, okay, well, I can't really just quilt that. Are you drawing on paper? Oh, this is paper to start with. Hi, Stella. How are you going? Um, so this is paper to start with, and then we're going to get this onto our um, batting. So we'll just start with this first, and that gives us an idea how we want to go. Now, you could simply do your half square triangles. Why not? Let's do that. That makes it easy. Would that be an easy one for everyone to do without actually having to cut triangles, without actually having to... Um, so on a, on a bias, that sounds easy, doesn't it? So half square triangles and we could actually even make it better up. Let's try better up. So let's go and halve these again. And the way this works is very similar to foundation piecing. And if you've always been frightened of foundation piecing, now you are about to go, oh my God, this is so easy. This is like a maze balls easy. So let's get in here and let's do that. So I've just made a square and a square. Hi everyone. Yes, yeah, Stella, how you going? Lockdown so needed you really, really badly. Oh baby. Oh Stella. Oh my heart bleeds, you guys. It's awful. So let's start with this. Now so rather than being a scrappy sort of one, we can still use our scraps, but we can make it really, really organised. Nice, hey. So here we've got the outer ones and here's your inner square. So if I was to turn that that way, 
then you would see the square facing flat to you. So it's a square and a square, correct? Now, when we do half square triangles, we always go, oh, my God, you know, we've got to cut on the bias. We've got to sew on the bias. Yeah, I know. No, Adelaide, South Australia, I know. No, she's in uh, Australia in uh, Adelaide, um, not Adelaide, South Australia, Joanne, and um, they've just gone down yesterday. So any kind of half square triangle type of effect, we're going to need a dark and a light. You always need a contrast. I think, Joanne, the lockdown for Stella is about six days to start with and then, hi, Maggie, and then, and then it goes to eight, I think, so... Yeah, total, and then to be revised, yeah. I think it's something to do with the virus uh, reproducing itself uh, in a shorter amount of a time, yeah. So this one here is going to be my dark, okay? So then that one needs to be my dark because I want them opposite. I don't want them right next to each other. And then I'm going to go, well, I might do that one there and this one here and that one there just to be different. And that one there, this one here, and that one there. So none of my darks are really touching each other. So does that help? So this is going to be the dark. So the stars are the dark one, okay? So just I can write dark fabric. Now, this is seriously going to be all scrappy. So I'm going to um, show you my scrap box. <laughs> and um, you're going to go, oh, my God, that's nothing. But to me, it's a lot. Um, because I've got so much other fabric. And then we also have, it is showing no symptoms and you can get it in 24 hours. Scary end of topic. Yes. Hi, Lou. How are you going? And these ones are going to be my light. Okay. So I'm just going to write it there because this is my pattern. This is what I'm going to work on and this is what it's going to be. So light, 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 light. And... This gives me a basis to go from. And I will do this pretty much every time I do any kind of pattern. Um, yes, 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 I agree with you, Joanne. All right. So any kind of pattern that I do, I always write it out or draw it out and get myself an idea of where and what I'm going to put in what place. So... Oh, you're in South Australia. Oh, you'll love this. This will give you something to play with for the next couple of days. So this is the basis of my pattern. And at the moment, it really looks quite, yeah, you know, it's a drawn picture. There's nothing exciting. But we're going to start doing the exciting part. So the first thing I want to do is get my wadding pieces and my backing pieces and I want to get them ready. So we're going to do that straight away. So easiest way to do them is to um, pile them up and, and cut all at once. So you're going to use Batiks Michelle. I am. Seems I have internet issues again today. It isn't clear pick for me again. Oh, that's no good. Um, everyone else's pick okay today? The video is showing up okay? You can't hear the fan in the background? So just popping this aside for a minute. I'm going to grab, and I do have my little iron doodah here, and I'm going to pop that. If I pop that there, it's going to create a bit of heat on my mat, and I certainly don't want to do that. Yeah. So my backing is also going to be a scrap. I mean, you can have, oh, good, Stella. Um, hi, Jenny. Hey, going. You can have your backing in any different colour you want. You can have them in in plain colours, in batiks, you can have it, whatever you choose, you can have it all in black, doesn't matter. This is a scrap buster for a reason and we're going to literally use up our scraps. It is Jenny. Picture perfect. Sound okay? Pretty good? So first things first, I'm going to need to just do a little bit of housekeeping, just a little, because I don't really iron, I'm going to press, just saying. It just tucks anyone. I don't iron anything. All my clothes are literally, and this is like three or four layers, by the way, all my clothes are literally iron-free, and if they do need ironing, they get, <laughs> they get worn with creases, like my jeans. 
<laughs> much to Dottie's disgust. Isn't that right, Dottie? <laughs> Even shirts. <laughs> My mum's even said to me, do you want me to iron that for you? No, I'm good. <laughs> so, okay, so just pop this one aside. This looks like a good way to start. Even though I said we're going to need 10, I'm going to start with, say, a couple of these just to get us going and then, we, you know, we can do it again and cut some more for the next step um, or part two. So I'll just pop them there. I won't pop that one away because I've decided. Here is a whistle on my sound TV. Oh, won't let me use it. What a poo. <laughs> yeah, Lou, I don't like, do not at all like any kind of housework. Sorry, my bad. So being a backing, this is, it has to be 12 inches, right? So that's not quite 12 inches that way. I'm just going to quickly run the iron over there. Um, and like I say, just press, very quick press. Nothing exciting. And we need 12 inch pieces. So I've got that on a fold. Okay, that's the width of fabric. It is going to give me, I'll just move that out of the way so I've got some room. Um, sorry, I'll just move it this way. I'm thinking of the moment here. It's only going to give me one one way. So it's going to give me 12 this way, but I'll have a bit of scrap left over, which I can throw in the front. No worries. David does his, he, oh, he does his ironing. He does his own. I like that kind of, that mine does not even expect it. He don't even ask. If we have to go out somewhere, he just looks at me really sad with big go eyes and goes, can you really, can you iron the shirt? And I just look at him. <laughs> this is how bad it is. My daughter, I had to iron his shirt one day. We're going to a wedding and I hate, hate, hate ironing. So I, <laughs> my daughter turned around to me and said, Mum, what are you doing? <laughs> I was ironing his shirt. <laughs> She's gone, what are you doing? Oh, honey, I'm ironing. Oh, what are you doing that for? Oh, because your father. <laughs> so, okay, this rule is eight inches. So I have lined this up with the, the actual um, mat on there and I'm counting across. You can't, it's off, just off camera, but I'm counting across. One, two, three, four. Putting the ruler straight on that fourth inch line and then I get my blade, which I've buried over here. Um, you don't iron anything. No, I, I don't, Stella. I don't like it. Oh. That sounded crunchy because it's loose. So we'll just do that up. It might need a new blade too, I'm reckoning. Done a bit of cutting over the last few days. Okay, so I'm a bit of a, um, an, a Nazi with people not, you know, putting their blade away. So if I don't put that blade away, you need to growl at me straight away. <laughs> just saying. I think Dottie's first experience with me in a class was me growling at her because she left the blade open. <laughs> she had me in fear. I did. I had her in absolute fear. Now, because this is, this is um, a batik, you can really use these salvage ed edges. And the way this quilt's going to work, that salvage edge is going to disappear anyway. So I'm actually going to leave it there. I'm just going to turn it over because it's not even, and I don't really want to play with that because that means I've got to iron again. So I'm just going to clean that up with a ruler and turn it the right way around so I can actually put my foot on it. Using the edge of my ruler, not my mat, edge of my ruler on the straight edge I've just cut, making sure it's straight top and bottom, which is not quite, so I will need to adjust. <laughs> And just trim that little bit off, just so she's straight. Once I've got that straight edge there, I know, <laughs> Lou, oh, that's it. Thank you very much, sweetheart. Once I've got that straight edge, I'm going to whip it around this side. And I need to cut it at 12 by 12, don't I? So I'm actually going to line that up there and count along with these, these markers. So one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So that's exactly where I need to mark. Just like that. You can mark it with a pencil if you want to. Turn it around the right way. Now, because I took my eyeball off it, I need to remark it again. We just move that fabric. Make sure she's straight. It is hard to cut while you're sitting down, FYI. <laughs> Lou's, Lou's crying because <laughs> I did. I had her terrified. So there's two straight away, just like that. I'll get three out of a width of fabric, which is lovely. You would obviously realise that too. Oh, you're going to swap them with me. Might be better. Thank you, sweetheart. I love my dotty do. She's awesome. Poor old Mary yesterday, she had to work hard <laughs> because we're doing the live um, Zoom video on the stained glass windows, the actual class um, a pattern I've made. Uh, <laughs> we had people wanting kits, so the poor love had to sit there and cut kits and she had to do like six straight up. <laughs> so I'm there at the long arm doing some long arming and she's there at the, the machine, at the um, bench cutting the pull up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And oh, you can put a pen mark there. Then if I take my eye off it, I know exactly where it is. Use the top of my ruler as a straight line. Don't rely entirely on your mat. Mats change with time. They literally distort and things like that. All right, scrappy bits, they're going to go in the quilt later on. But this will give me three blocks to start with, and I think that's a really good place to start for today. Don't you? So there's my three of those. Pop them aside there. Now we have the big kahuna, the big wadding. Now this is a poly wadding. A poly wadding, and it accidentally got cut wrong, didn't it, Dottie? This is the one that got cut wrong, didn't it? It was. <laughs> I don't know, Dottie. I don't know how that cut, got cut wrong. But anyway, we're going to. Now, a lot of people are really inclined to run their blade through these. It will blunten your blade, just saying. So it's quite, quite okay to use scissors. And I'm not uninclined, so to speak, to not just um, use a marker on it. Now, it also has a scrim, so you'll see it's like a like a like a film on the on one side and it's where it's needle punched. We need to make sure the other side is facing the top. Okay? The scrim faces the back. I don't want to put that there. And I'm going to get my ruler and mark around about 10 inches so. I'm gonna mark it at 10, and I'm just gonna put a texture mark. It will go away. I'm going to cut past it. I'm just gonna go up the side using the ruler and put another mark here. And let's just run a quick line down there. Nothing to see here. And then I'm going to grab my scissors, and these really aren't, these are my paper scissors, so they're not going to like that at all. Oh, this is paper ones. So I only have one kit left, actually, um, and if I have to make more, it'll have to be a different colourway. And yours is definitely gone in the mail. All right. Now, the other thing I want to do is make sure I cut that bit of light fluff, which is which would be like the salvage in um, fabric. It's really quite thin and light and there's no real um, scrim on there. Just open that out and you can see it's quite wonky at the moment, but it will give me a rough guesstimate until I've got it out as a piece. So Daisy, just need to turn that around. I'm going to just use the scissors just to trim there and bring it up to there and eyeball. And the other thing too is when you actually use, it's is it just polyester that blunts blades or all wadding? Uh, Sue Armstrong, it is pretty much all blood, uh, wadding. Polyester is a bit harsher on the blades. Plus, really, you don't want to be trying to get that out of 
um, the inside of your mat. Like it can really get real dug in, hard to get out type of stuff. So if I'm going to do any kind of cutting with it and I need to cut it, I, I will. I will use a blade, but I tend to try and do as little amount of cutting as possible like this. So I've just got to take off that tiny little bit, just like that. But you can see instantly it creates like this fluff. So you can, I know this won't help the blade at all, but you can get there and, and do that. An eraser will also get it off. Get my old mat to use for wanting. That's a great idea, Stella. Yep. Um, and a, an eraser. Dottie has done the Google master search. No. Oh, you used it all the time. There you go. So an eraser. All right. So, oh, it does too. Look at that. There's tip number three for today. <laughs> so a simple eraser. All right. So what I do then, I place it on the mat to give me an eyeball idea. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, it's just going to make it. We'll deal with it. It's a fraction off. I'm not going to cry and I'm not going to waste it. So that is our first one. Let's just go with that to start with. And we get one of your backings. And there's that. Again, making sure the scrim is on the other side and it is sitting reasonably centred to there and we're ready to almost, almost start. Um, first things first I'm going to do and, yeah, I know, I'm using a texture. I love permanent markers. They're the best. I'm going to do my cross line, my other cross line, and then I'm going to use that straight edge for my centre here and my centre here. Using the ruler gives me a guide. All right. What's the matter, Dottie? Oh. <laughs> and then I'm also going to do this across here, just as if the foundationing, but without the without the uh, the stress of perfection. All right, so that will go there because, because they're on point here, you are going to lose your point. So my finished block will be around about nine and a half inches square. Okay. Now, if you want points, just saying you're going to have to come in and start a quarter inch in here. Okay. But me, I'm, I'm okay without points because um, the points can be in there. And these are going to have, these are literally going to have borders in between, okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, the Lynette, Lynette Terry loves the way I teach. I'm so, so easy and straight down to it. Um, now, we had on our pattern piece of paper that we had before, we had written down, what's the dose? Dark, dark, that way, then that way, then that way. All right, so we do need to go follow our pattern. So I'll move it over so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. So this is going to be dark, 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 just like there and there. Then we're going to have dark, 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 and dark. Nice. All right, take your little bits of fluff off your texture. The other ones we don't need to mark because it's obviously going to be the other colour, all colours. What's the matter, Uh No, they're, they're okay. You do work out the other things, yeah? There's some up there, though. They're up there on the shelf, yeah. Okay, so they're going to be my dark ones. Now, the first thing I need to do is figure out how am I going to get this down without you know, having them cross over and make a mess, okay? So you could, you could literally do one big colour in the centre there if you wanted to. Why not? Um, me personally, I'm going to go and do this one and that one 
And then I'm going to go and do, I might even do that one there, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. See how we go. Let's have a look. What do we go? Oh, no, I can't do a dark there because, yeah, we've got lights. Okay. So we just look at where we want these things to be and we've got to find a starting point. And the starting point, you know, it could be in the centre, you know, you could start here, anywhere you like. You can even just start with a square and just keep building out. No reason why not. But today we're going to try and get these triangles working. Even if we can only get the outside edges done, we do a dark light, a dark light, and these inside ones, maybe we need to... I don't know, um, do them, so two pieces together first and then put it in. We'll see. So getting your scraps is fun because we just want to figure out what kind of colours we're going to use. And, you know, you, you sort of go with, I mean, I'm going to go with anything because that's just sort of how I roll. So, um, and I'm just finding little bits and pieces that can be the cheeks. That's an edge of a quilt, that one. I don't like that one. So this one's got, oh, look at that. That would be really good because I could actually have used the stripes. Hey, now there's a plan. So you just go through and figure out what you want to start with first and how you want it to um, uh, evolve, okay? So I have lots and lots of fabrics here. I could even use that as my dark and then all the other colours can sort of just match in with that. Okay, and that's even an option. All right, so I do have the hot pink as well, so I can use that. But I am liking that. I do like that. Well, we could go into the greens. Now, I keep coming back to that one. That's pretty awesome. That's not really a scrap piece, though, is it? <laughs> Let's try some more scrappy ones. All right, there's a scrappy one. There we go. There's a scrap one, and we've got some hot pinks as well so let's give it a quick iron and I do have to watch the time because I'm frightened that the uh, camera will just drop out on me so um, I'm not too sure how long I've been on live I think I started at 11 did I yeah so half an hour so part one is really just getting the start of it going and let's just start by getting a piece that's going to be big enough. Now, you can be, you know, anally retentive if you want to or you can just be like me and not. <laughs> but I know looking at that, I'm going to need a piece that is around about the three-inch mark. So if I go three, four inches in about that, gives me plenty. Might create some more scraps for myself. Okay. So that's going to be my first one. And that's going to go there. Now, you always want to, with your first kind of scrappy quilt with these, you want to literally make sure that you, the first one, you just stitch straight down. So we're going to stitch through all three pieces and I'll make sure I'm overlapping and we have it face up. It's perfect for boutiques because there's no real way of seeing whether they're face up or not. And Looking at that, I can see the lines that I've made. I know I've, I've crossed over more than a quarter of an inch. Even if you were to do more, we can do it like foundation piecing and cut it back if we want to. Makes no diff. Unless you're using white on this side, um, which I probably won't, but that, that will sew in just nicely. Now, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to put a pin in there and Dottie's going to grab my pins because she's a maze balls. She's swearing too. Did you hear that? <laughs> she dropped the F-bomb. <laughs> she just hurt herself. So I'm just going to pin that there for now. And you'll notice that the line disappears. So I've got no real idea of where the heck I'm going. So I get my um, pencil. So this is my Bowen pencil, um, so line, Bowen, anything that's a fine line or chalk, whatever you like, and I just get that there and do that and I'll turn it this way and I'm going to use that line as a reference and, again, 
don't freak out if it's not perfect. We, we make this and we stuff up a bit on the way. Who cares? Let's just get busy. First thing we're going to do is stitch that down and I will, uh, I'm going to do it with a dark thread so you can see it. So I'll go and do that and um, I won't move the camera or anything, but I will be back in a second and I'll stitch that. Okay, so I've just stitched that down really, really quickly there and there and Dottie's going to change it to my walking foot because we're doing three layers. We need it to be on the walking foot. That was my bad, Dottie. So just cutting some of that thread, move this out of the way and I am going to trim that along there because I really don't need that excess and I can use that maybe for another triangle. So... I'll just do it roughly for now. Don't want to come in too far because then I don't want to cut my backing. There we go. Just nicely. And that can sit there. Again, like I said, if you're wanting to cut that off, you need to fold that back. And see, we've gone through all three layers. There it is there. Fold that back for yourself and just trim that off. No, or leave it. Whatever you suit. But don't leave a massive amount. When you leave massive amounts, that's when you get... A, um, a real lot of bulk in there it becomes really quite awkward to deal with. So I'll turn that that way. And I just did that one. So I'm going to fold that back there, pinch it together, fold it like that, and do a quarter inch. And there we go. So that's one. Nice. Done. There we go. Now we can do this one. I'm thinking of this one. Hmm. I think that needs to be a double. And uh, we could probably do, either way, I don't think it matters. So let's pick our next colour. Um, I could do the yellow. So I'll just run the iron over that quickly. It doesn't really matter. And that's going to go like that. Now, you will see that I'm going to have a double line there, okay? So don't stress with mine at the moment. We're just going to have this on the first one. So I need to mark, just mark on this my quarter inch and find my pencil that I just buried. There it is. And I'll turn it this way. I'll go that way. That's my straight edge. And there's my quarter inch. Is that my half inch? That's my quarter inch. So I'm just going to draw that line down there. Oops. And I might even do it in pen so you can see. So I'm just going to do that. Okay. I'm using my... My uh, thingy here, my, my mat, and just give myself the other side there. So I've just drawn these just like that. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so that gives me a line of where I want to literally sew. So with, whether I have it this way or whatever way, I've got a line. So that's the one I want. Now, my idea on this would be to actually sew directly on top of that one I've just done so to do that and you don't have to do it this way you can do it all in one go just like foundation piecing just go through that there so you know exactly where it is and just make sure it's all lined up a bit of a wobble There we go. 
And then we'll go this way, which I need to bring it in because that line's in the wrong spot. So, oh, I don't need that line. I need to do this. Oh, look at that pin. Do you see the pin? <laughs> it's a real wonky one. Um, and then I need to find this point here, just there. I want to go past it just so I can fold it. I'm going to flip, all right? So we're just going to sew this bit here. I'm going to try and get on the top of that line, but it doesn't matter if I don't because my aim is to get this quilted, not actually perfect. I don't do perfect. Those who know me know I don't do perfect. All right, so I'm just going to flip over the machine and stitch that up. All right, so I've stitched straight on that line that I had and I need to, I missed it a little bit there, but like I say, no big deal. I could fold that across if I want to. I can just leave it the way it is. You're not going to see it on the top, all right? So my next one is to do this. Yeah, yeah? And to be honest, thinking of this as I'm going, I'm thinking maybe I might change it around a bit. So let's see how we go. Now, to find this line, I need to use this stitch, which I already did earlier, and I'm going to get my hen so you know what I'm doing. I'll just make sure that's covering that. And it might be a little bit smaller than a quarter inch, so it's just going to be a quarter inch. So I'm going to stitch across there. All right. So I'm literally going to stitch right across from there. And I could start again here and go across so, you know, you don't have double lines. But if you're smart, this here I'm using, I'm doing um, in black so you can see the, what I'm stitching, but you would use a tone on tone. So use your, your pink and you can use a pink on the top then, all right? So whatever colour is on the back, use in your bobbin. Um, so I'm going to stitch that down there and then we're going to figure out what we're going to do next. I reckon it's going to be very easy. Okay, and the other thing you want to just make sure that you don't go past that. I've gone past it a couple of places, which I'll have to just quickly unpick. Don't go past your wadding. <laughs> just a heads up. So I'll um, probably give that a little clip just to get past, get back to my wadding edge. There we go. All right. All right, so we're stitched down there. So that, that is our two half square triangles. Yeah? So to do these ones, we're going to have a little bit of an issue because how do I get them to join? How do I do this? Well, easy peasy, not. Okay, so let's go with, we've got this one. It's going to go there, correct? And we just need a straight edge and then we need another bit of yellow. And I will grab it from probably this side. I'm going to turn her over, fold that back, and make sure I don't cut anything I shouldn't. So let's just trim that back to there. Nice. Oh, don't do that. I can sign it down. All right. So what I want is, <coughs> excuse me is I want those two to join together, yeah? So let's sew them together, but we first need a straight edge. And I do also need to just neaten up a little bit, make sure I've got enough fabric to cover it, which I do. So what I did was I placed it over the top just to make sure. The other thing too is, <clears throat> excuse me, is I need to make sure that when I do this, so if I sew them together that way, and I'll just put a pin and show you what I mean, I sew them that way, 
that when they open up, that they are that way around. Now, <clears throat> if I had fabric that was um, uh, like a normal printed fabric, like a digital printed fabric, and I had them the wrong way around, like the right side up or the wrong side up, or I had them sewn, say, and I went and sewn this side, what would happen is, yeah, I might get that to open up, but it's not going to fit. I'm going to have to turn it around, which means it's going to ruin what I'm actually doing. Does, it, does everyone sort of get what I mean? Has anyone got any questions? Okay, no, it's still going. All right. So I know that they're going to fit. I've got plenty of room. I've got heaps of room over there. Um, and like I say, if you've got this line here and you don't like the double up on the lines, you know, there, just do the, the fabric. Yep, you get what I mean? Yep. Do the, the, the stitching on the back the same colour. Purposely make it so you're going next to them so it doesn't look like you're, you're crossing over and, and making a bit with it. Or do it as a basting stitch and then your main stitch will be the last one. Do you know what I mean? So that you can unpick your basting stitch. But for this demo, we're just going to do a double stitch and let it go. So this one here, I'm going to turn them right sides together and I'm cheating because I love cheating. You all know I love to cheat whenever possible. And I'm going to cut that like that. I'm just going to turn it that way because I can see that I've got a different shape. I'll just get my ruler in the right way. And using that ruler there, I'm going to do that. And I am going to trim that little nasty bit off there because it's annoying me. And get that thread out because that's annoying me too. Come on. Come on, baby. There we go. So I'm just moving my bits away. So do you remember where you had them? I'm pretty sure they were like that. Hang on. No, they're not. Make sure you double check. Check twice, cut once, okay? So lay it down. Open it up, fold it over. You're going to sew across that seam there. Oh, good. Good, Joanne. I'm glad you're enjoying. So we're going to sew across there. All right, so I'm going to sew these together and make them into one piece. Yeah? I'll be back in a sec. Okie doke. Now, for those who love to press beyond ridiculous, we can just go and give that a tiny press so we can make it nice and fresh. Okay, you know, she's fresh. And this one here will give that a little press, and I am going to press to the dark side. So that is going to go that way. So I press to one side. And I'll just show you what I'm doing, just so you know. So I hold the hold the light side down. So I nearly did it the wrong way. Light side down, and I just run it along like that. And then I get a nice. Step. Don't push, don't shove it in, or you will end up um, with a, a wonky seam. So that now creates. Just getting rid of my little hairy bits, and I've got a hairy bit there. That now gives us that. So that's what we want to have happen. What we do need to do is make sure that we flip, okay, and we line up our seams as if we do, we're do. we doing piecing together. So I'll get this closer for you. So I'm going to be butting up the yellow to the yellow and the dark to the dark, all right? So that one there, there and I'll put a pin in it. And I really want to make sure I am right on that pin. So I've got the pin 
right in where that seam is. You see there? So the pin sits in that seam and that goes there. Now, I know that there's my line there. I could literally go, all right, let's have, let's go, there's my line. But to keep in sync with what I've already been doing, I'm going to do it right on top of that line as best as I can. So you could do a scant or a one eight seam and then come and do a one quarter seam and that will give you a double line stitch all the way through the back of the quilting and it won't look silly. <laughs> so this way, just need to make sure that I'm on that line. All right. There it is there. I can, if I want to, just draw the line, um, but I don't think I need to. When I'm finished, I am going to trim that little bit off there because it's going to be showing on that lighter colour. All right, so I'm going to take that quickly to the machine. Okie doke, so I've come back, get my little bits of fluff off, and I'm going to turn that over. Uh, look how wicked that is. Hey, hey, look at that. So we'll grab this little doodah here because I can see that that little bit there is going to show through this because it's light and dark, all right? Don't bother trying to do it with your blade. It is too small and too close and you're likely to cut through your wadding, all right? Now, I do have to watch the clock because um, the camera, I still haven't got the charger thing. There wasn't any in a country at the moment. So um, we might end up doing this is your start and we'll keep going with another video. Maybe, uh, what's today? Maybe tomorrow or maybe on Sunday. All right, so there we go, nice and flat. Give it a little press. And there we are there. Nice. Get you. Well, I'm going to use my pencil. I can find the end of it. Using that line that I've already got there as my basis and that one that I've already got drawn here. Now, I might need to do a darker line so you can see it. That's, oops, a day's, there it is there. All right, so I'm going to stitch along. I just need to move that line there just in a bit. Just moved. There we go. And I'm going to stitch that along. If you feel unsure about the fabric moving, no reason why I can't throw a nice pin or two in there. On either side, I've just found all these pins. I'm sure Dottie puts them in there on purpose. All these pins. <laughs> There's another one. It's got a proverbial bend. And just put them in that way just so that it holds it and stops it from flapping around. So I'm going to quickly run now. And then I'm probably going to run across there as well. All right. Now I'll be back in a sec and have that stitch for you. All right, so I just went over the, the pin. Um, Julie's enjoying herself. Nice. You've got lots of love hearts on that. Make sure you share the video and subscribe and tell your friends because they'll be able to do this too. So there we go, all done. 
we're going to grab the fabric just as if you would with um, foundation piecing. Just need to snip that back a bit. I've just gone over the edge of where I want to be. Just don't want to go past that wadding bit there. Put my ruler over, do the quarter inch, slice her off. If you were to leave that inside the quilt, you'll end up with, oh, cat's good. Um, thanks, calf. So um, if you leave that in, it's going to bulk up too much. All right. So then I grab this bit of fabric here, fold it back and trim off that excess. Fab you loose. So now if you're going to do your 16 blocks, you can do this process on all 16 and move to the next, next process and so on and so forth. So this is entirely up to you as to how you want to move along in your quilt. I'm just going to do a block at a time just so you can see how it progresses. All right, so I'm just going to trim that off yet. Oh, I might do that little bit there. It's just a little bit. You know when something just irks with your OCD? Yeah, that one did. All right, so take that. Yeah, we've got no doggies. All right, so that's number one. Could you put the next piece on top, face down, and only stitch once? Absolutely. There are all sorts of emojis at the bottom. Yeah, there are. Yeah, absolutely. You don't have to do the stitch twice thing. I am just to show you the basics of it. But as we go along, I'll show you how I do it without stitching twice, okay? Um, makes it a lot easier. But for those who are beginning, and if you had on the back, you had um, thread that actually matched your backing, like I've got black on, on pink, you know, it's going to be really obvious. But if you had thread to match, which I will show you next one around, then you'll find that you won't see it if you do double up. All right. So my next step is to do obviously the next piece. So I can do one of a couple of ways. And my first theory is to go, well, I probably need to do this one. And we're going to literally like pin that down. Um, and it's going to be, it can be pinned down that side. So you could have left that open. So unpick that, leave it open and not actually stitch it down. Just have it pinned. Get your next piece, which I'll show you what um, Rusty Mischief is talking about. So I'll show you that now from here on in and this is the easiest way to do it just like foundation piecing all right so this is going to be my light color so let's just go with i don't know find a i don't know uh, find another bit of yellow there but i'll challenge a different color what about a limey green hmm. no i don't want that one. okay what about, well, that's light. A bit ordinary, though. Oh, here we go. What's this? Oh, look at that. Nice little square line. And that's going to be my light colour because my whole pieces, if I can get more this colour for my dark, that would be really awesome. So I'm just going to give that a, even if I find, you should see the way I've got <laughs> Oh, that's a light one. We'll do this one. Now, I think that one would be yeah, too much, too much, too much. So we're going to try this one. Um, 58 minutes. Okay, Stella, thanks. So just give it a quick press. Trying to work quick for you guys. And I am literally going to, oh, yeah, you've got another piece, have you? Smaller. Dottie's saving. She's there in the background looking through and Grabbing all my little bits and pieces out. I'm just going to cut across here just to give myself a piece. Is that annoying? That's because I chuck them in a box. It's just disgusting. So, all right. So I'm going to just sew this one down just for giggles. And I'm going to need to pin up the those. Go this way, Michelle. Might be easier. She's been a good girl, Dottie Do. She always is a good girl. I'm just going to use that line that I've drawn on this piece and I'm literally going to draw on here and I want it to stop here. 
and here. So I'm just doing a mark this time and I'm going to quickly sew that down and then I'll show you the other way. Okay, so pretend that I hadn't done the first stitch first so that we don't have a double up. And I've just stitched those two down in one go. Oh, I know. So this is a massive piece of fabric and it actually covers up everything that I've got here. But I'm okay with that because I can literally use, and not with a biro, mark it with your other pencil. So your chalk pencil, something that you can get off. Mark off the edges of where this piece is, just so you know. Gives you a bit of a rough idea. And that one there, so I'm using that line there. And up to there. And what I want to do, and there's my triangle just there. You probably not see it from there, but if I go up close, is that a bit better? No, that's a bit blurry, isn't it? There we go. It's just there. So what I'll do is grab my scissors and just trim outside of that and I'm going to press that down just like so and I'm not stitching it that is it I am going to remark my lines because I want them to line up here and I'm going to get my dark fabric so I really want to show you this before the camera cuts out on me and I'm just going to grab a piece a bit bigger than I should have, but it'll do the job. And this is why we have scraps. My dream is to work a fabric patch workshop. Go Dottie. That's Joanne Powell. Um, yeah, the lovely Dottie. Yeah, she's here at work today. So this one here, it's got to go across here. Okay. And then it's got to flip over just like that. So we do need a straight edge of some sort. So I'm going to grab my blade. Um, there's something on my screen stopping me from seeing things. Oh, there it's gone now. Hey, Joanne, it is a lot of fun and games, but it's hard work. <laughs> a bit like a florist. People used to say to me when I had the florist, oh, I'd love to have your job. It'd be so nice. It'd be so lovely. <laughs> right, so I'm laying that down over top, and I haven't cut back this green. I've just left it the way it is. I've ironed it down. I've pressed it. I've done the big eek thing. And I'm placing this over the top and I'm lining it up with the fabric before that's underneath it. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I know it gives me plenty of room for my seam. But to make this sit nice, we need to pin that there. We're only going to stitch this piece here, okay, because we want to flip that that way. It's a bit of a stitch and flip. So you get your pencil, line up with your line on here, Pretty cool. Did you know that you could actually do this? Did you know that, Dottie? Mm -hmm. Did you know that you could do this? Mm -hmm. You didn't know that. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's highly likely. Well, it's not really work. It's fun. It is fun. Yeah, it is lots of fun. So I'm going to go from here to here. So I need to mark the edge of my wadding and the point of cross where it comes down this way, but I do not want to sew down there. Okay, so don't sew down there. We just want to go from here to here. Okay, so I'm going to quickly do that. Okay. Just done that. So true, Julie. It would be a dream come true. Yeah. It's lots of fun. Julie comes in sometimes and helps me out. And when I do lives and things like that, like live sales, because 
on my um, Facebook page, I have a huge amount of followers on, on Facebook. Probably find a lot of them are from Facebook that are here today. And um, they tend to follow me, which is lovely because I enjoy, enjoy my time with them. And um, I do lots and lots of sales and live videos and feeds and things like that. But I've started using, um, oops, I've just cut that little bit there. That was a bit silly. Very close. And, um, yeah, so they get to see it, but I've started with YouTube a bit more now. All right, so I'm just pressing that back like that. I've got my – I can tell I'm going to miss that. That was a bit of a nick that I've done when I folded over. That was a bit silly. wasn't looking properly. So we just fold that over. Give her a quick press. Again, don't stretch it. Just press it, all right? You're not ironing. You're pressing. Then what we need to do is literally leave that. Don't do anything as far as stitching or cutting. Don't stitch that line. Just pin it down here. We can draw it if you want to. So it goes across like that, just so you can see from this line here that we've drawn on the wadding, we want to come across. It's going to be a bit of a tight squeeze there, but it'll do the job. That just gives me a bit of an eyeball. You can, if you like, trim the edge of this here. But I probably wouldn't trim too much of that yet um, until, give yourself a bit of room, um, until you um, have stitched down. So that can just stay like that. And then we're going to work on this second piece. Remember when we joined them together before? So I'm wondering whether that will make it. And I think it will. It will just make it. So it'll make that piece... And then I've got this stuff here, and I'm pretty sure that that will make that piece there, just lining it up, doing a bit of an eyeball and putting those little scrappy bits aside. That's good You that you do the nick. As we can see, you have to be really careful trimming. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, again, I want to have straight sides, both of these. And you see she's a little bit, you know, weird on one side, so we really want to be careful that we don't 10 mill ourselves. I just didn't quite cut enough. Um, plus, the girls love to see when I stuff up because <laughs> it, makes it, it makes it real. Yeah, it makes them feel more human because, you know, we all do these mistakes. None of us are perfect. You can see that little bit of thread there. If you don't trim that off now, it's going to stick out wider, just saying. All right, so you've got it there. We want to go past the line by a good, good bit. We want to have that one there. They are going to fit beautifully. So let's sew these two babies together on that side. So what I did was grabbed the lighter one, flipped it over. So flip, and then we're going to stitch. So let's... Do these together. We want to do them down this side. Today's it's a massive pin. We feel better to see you do that. <laughs> and we're going to stitch down there. And I'm just going to stitch a quarter inch as normal and I'll bring it back. So because I have, I've got a, a small walking foot and sometimes a small walking foot will actually um, like chew the end of my fabric if I, if I don't have wadding in there. So we're going to flip that open, okay, but we want to make sure that we go from the light side and we're going to flip it that way. You can finger press if you like. If you don't want to iron, just for the sake of it, I'm going to run the iron on it and it's nice and flat. Now, keeping an eyeball on those. You want to give yourself lots of room, remember. Come over there, line up your seam with this line here, with the stitch, with this drawn line. So you've got it there. You can see that? Also line up, and that'll make that line up with that, because that's my stitch line. That'll line up with that thing there, that um, join, that thing. All right, so just keep my finger on there and making sure it hasn't moved. Pop a pin in and just put that there. Take that pin out of there. 
making sure we've got plenty of room. And I'm just going to pop a pin in the end there and way over here, way off the screen. There it is. So I've just got one, two, three. Main one that you want to worry about is your point, okay? Then don't grab your blade like I just did. Grab your pencil and using the, the ruler with that line, I'm down here, especially on your um, darker one. Make sure you've got that drawn. And I'm just going to do this in pen for you to see. Okay. And what I want to make sure is see this point here? That's that line there. I want to make sure that I stop here. And that's that point there, which will join it in here. Okay. So it's going to come across it. It could be off a fraction. I'm not really overly worried about it. The other thing I want to do is just make sure that I can feel where the edge of the wadding is. And that's sort of where I want to go to, no further. So I'm going to stitch down there and bring it back and we'll trim it. And then, yeah, they are really short, love. They're, they're, um, they're sort of meant to be just so that they don't get in my way and I'll stab myself. So I'm going to stick, that's a pins if anyone's wondering. Um, so I'm going to stitch from here down to here and stop at this point. If I'm smart, I will just move it over a fraction and my join. I can see, if I turn it around, I'll show you. See that bit there? That's, that's you know, where it's going to stitch and join there. So I want to make sure that it's in there and just have it there like that so I know where I've got to go to. All right, taking this just to the machine and, um, oh, Stella, they're like $2, they're cheap eyes. They're just little cheapies, but, yeah, I've got I've got them. Yep. Um. So they're about, they're just birch ones, sweetie. So they are like that. So they would be an inch long, okay? So I'm popping a pack in there for you, darling. Stella. I'm going to stitch that and come straight back and then we'll move on. So I did something wrong then. I'll, I'll tell you what I did. I backstitched, which was really silly. But anyway, it's okay for now. So there we go. All good. Turn it over. I've grabbed those together. Quarter inch. Trim her back. Just like that. Get rid of that. Make sure your backing is out of the way. Okay. Done nothing else. I'm just going to flip just like that. You can finger press or you can you can um, iron. Like I say, I'm just going to iron. All right. So that's one. That's number two. All right. So number one and number two. So I flip them over. So really when you bring your threads through, uh, I've just been cutting off. You need to bring them through and sort of bury them somewhere up in the top part. And this bit here, you can see they're all double lines. See how they're double lines? Let's see if I can get that camera to zoom in a bit. Double lines. This is, that's number one. This is number two, single lines. But like I say, don't backstitch like I just did. That would be silly. So now, just, just for giggles, we'll just pin these sides a bit. Um, just to keep them from flapping around. Um, I don't need to really trim them yet. Once I've actually done the whole block, I will stitch all the way around and then we'll go on to um, our next block. So this one is halfway done and we've done it in around about an hour, obviously with me fluffing around. 
green fabric, a nice batik. It is a lovely batik, isn't it? So um, where is it? That was it there. I think that was um, a fern textile one, I think, or batik Australia. I'm not too sure. It's got no, I don't have it now. It's well and truly a while ago. It's a lovely fabric. Um, I do have a lot of those sort of fabrics. So that's that one. So the next one over here, I'll probably use the same colourway as that. This one here, I'm definitely not going to cut off. I'm going to draw a line using that stitch line as a guide of where my next stitch is going to go. But I'm not going to do that until I've got the next one to actually... Ah, yeah, this, this ruler here, this is um, a, a two and a half inch ruler. Like it's basically like a, a strip ruler. I don't think I have any in stock at the moment. I can get them in um, uh, two and a half inches and I think it's uh, 16 inches long. How much is the thinner ruler? And I've got a feeling they're around about the $19 mark off the top of my head. So before we drop out on video, um, I'm going to draw that line in now. Just note that the actual fabric moved. I'll just pin that down for time being. And that is an uh, excellent job. Was not going to start a new project, was working on UFOs, but hey, what the hell? Exactly. Exactly. So we've done two blocks and you've done half inch triangles and you haven't had to cut one triangle and sew them together and cut them all in half and all that sort of stuff. We've just used scrap. So if you, I mean, I'll just try and actually see if I can guide this camera up a little, see if it'll do it. There we go. Oh, and across here. And I'll zoom out. Oops, so there it is. So I literally have this box of stuff, like there you are there. <laughs> um, so getting back to what we were doing, sorry about the video. Um, well, I have loved this video. Thank you. Thank you, Kath. Um, like I say, share and share and share. Let others do it as well. Learn how to do uh, it as a um, scrappy quilt, but also as quilt as you go. Now, there's another way of doing this. Once we've done this one, I'm going to show you a second way just for fun. <laughs> and that's doing it without the backing and then stitching over the top again. So I will um, leave you for now. We'll come back on probably Sunday or Monday. Whenever I get a chance to come back live, I will let you know ahead of time. And we will do part two and get this other half done. That sounds awesome, doesn't it, Dottie? Yeah. Sounds like fun. Yeah. Glad you've enjoyed yourselves. Thank you again for all your time. We've been on here for about an hour and 20 minutes. I've enjoyed having the time with you. Don't forget, like I said, subscribe and share. And um, then I can get some more content out to you. And it makes it fun for everyone. Yes, my colours are so going to change all the way through this. It'll be a real scrappy quilt. <laughs> all right, guys. See you soon. Bye.